is it's giving us microscopic information without us actually having to look through a microscope. You can see it rises up as the bubbles. We think that this fractal approach may be helpful in distinguishing benign from malignant lesions in a way that hasn't been possible up to now. It may take years before fractals can help doctors predict cancer, but they are already offering clues to one of biology's more tantalizing mysteries. Why big animals use energy more efficiently than little ones? That's a question that fascinates biologists James Brown and Brian Inquist, and physicist Jeffrey West. There is an extraordinary economy of scale as you increase in size. An elephant, for example, is 200,000 times heavier than a mouse, but uses only about 10,000 times more energy in the form of calories it consumes. The bigger you are, you actually need less energy per gram of tissue to stay alive. That is an amazing fact. And even more amazing is the fact that this relationship between the mass and energy use of any living thing is governed by a strict mathematical formula. So far as we know, that law is universal, or almost universal, across all of life. So it operates from the tiniest bacteria to whales and sequoia trees. But even though this law had been discovered back in the 1930s, no one had been able to explain it. We had this idea that it probably had something to do with how resources are distributed within the bodies of organisms as they varied in size. We took this big leap and said, all of life in some way is sustained by these underlying networks that are transporting oxygen, resources, metabolites that are feeding cells. Circulatory systems and respiratory systems and renal systems and neural systems. It was obvious that fractals were staring us in the face. If all these biological networks are fractal, it means they obey some simple mathematical rules, which can lead to new insights into how they work. If you think about it for a minute, it would be incredibly inefficient to have a set of blueprints for every single stage of increasing size. But if you have a fractal code, a code that says when to branch as you get bigger and bigger, then uh, a very simple genetic code can produce what looks like a complicated organism evolution by natural selection has hit upon a design that appears to give the most bang for the buck. In 1997, West Brown and Enquist announced their controversial theory that fractals hold the key to the mysterious relationship between mass and energy use in animals. Now they are putting their theory to a bold new test an experiment to help determine if the fractal structure of a single tree can predict how an entire rainforest works. Enquist has traveled to Costa Rica, to Juanacaste province in the northwestern part of the country. The government has set aside more than 300,000 acres in Juanacaste as a conservation area. This rainforest, like others around the world, plays a vital role in regulating the Earth's climate by removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. If you look at the forest, it basically breathes. And if we understand the total amount of carbon dioxide that's coming into uh, these trees within this forest, we can then better understand how uh, this forest then ultimately regulates the total amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. With carbon dioxide levels around the world rising, how much CO2 can rainforests like this one absorb? And how important is their role in protecting us from further global warming? Enquist and a team of U.S. scientists think that fractal geometry may help answer these questions. Let's try to get the height of the tree measured here. 
They are going to start by doing just about the last thing you'd think a scientist would do here. Cut down a balsa tree. It's dying anyway, and they have the permission of the authorities. So Christine, as soon as you know the height of that tree, we can actually figure out the approximate angle that we need to take it down on. Hooking a guideline on a high branch helps ensure the tree will land where they want it to. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Jose, perfecto. Enquist and his colleagues then measure the width and length of the branches to quantify the tree's fractal structure. Eight. Ten point oh six. No, that's eight. Six point three. Point oh three. Six zero. Eight. Seven on the nose. They also measure how much carbon a single leaf contains, which should allow them to figure out what the whole tree can absorb. So if we know the amount of carbon dioxide that one leaf is able to take in, then hopefully using the fractal branching rule, we can know how much carbon dioxide the entire tree is taking in. Their next step is to move from the tree to the whole forest. All right, this is good. 13.2, 3.3R. We're going to census this forest. We're going to be measuring the diameter at the base of the trees, ranging all the way from the largest trees down to the smallest yeah. trees. Three meters above the ground. And in that way, we can then sample the distribution of sizes okay. within the forest. Okay. The is 61.8 centimeters. Even though the forest may appear random and chaotic, the team believes it actually has a structure. One that, amazingly, is almost identical to the fractal structure of the tree they have just cut down. The beautiful thing is that the distribution of the sizes of individual trees in the forest appears to exactly match the distribution of the sizes of individual branches within a single tree. If they're correct, studying a single tree will make it easier to predict how much carbon dioxide an entire forest can absorb. When they finish here, they take their measurements back to base camp, where they'll see if their ideas hold up. So is this the, this is the tree plot, right? Yeah. The, the cool thing is that if you look at the tree, you see the same pattern amongst the branches as we see amongst the trunks yeah. of the forest. Very nice. Just as they predicted, the relative number of big and small trees closely matches the relative number of big and small branches. It's actually phenomenal that it is parallel. Yeah. The slope of that line for the tree appears to be the same for the forest as well. So I guess it was worth cutting up the tree? It was definitely worth cutting up the tree. So far, the measurements from the field appear to support the scientist's theory that a single tree can help scientists assess how much this rainforest is helping to slow down global warming. By analyzing the fractal patterns within the forest, that then enables us to do something that we haven't really been able to do before, have then a mathematical basis to predict how the forest as a whole takes in carbon dioxide. And ultimately, that's important for understanding what may happen with global climate change. For generations, scientists believed that the wildness of nature could not be defined by mathematics. But fractal geometry is leading to a whole new understanding, revealing an underlying order governed by simple mathematical rules. What I thought of in my hikes through forests, that, you know, just a bunch of trees of different sizes, big ones here, small ones there, looking like it's sort of some arbitrary, chaotic mess, actually